Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. Today I'm doing a weekly oracle card uh, guidance reading here. Uh, there are three options as usual, but I'm going to be focusing on love. So I haven't done one of these oracle card uh, guidance uh, readings for a while focusing on love. And I just thought that some of you out there might be wondering and might be wishing for that. And so, yeah, we have three options. We have the, the quartz crystal heart here. Uh, this is a, um, um, yeah, just a glass uh, ruby and a rose quartz. And those are your three options and you may choose uh, either one, two or three. The cards we're using are the Alana Fairchild Rumi Oracle cards. And um, yeah, you, we are just going to use one deck of cards today. I just felt drawn to work with one deck only. I felt that uh, the messages will be more precise uh, with that. So I haven't uh, delivered a, an energy forecast for a really long time and I just thought I'd give you a little bit of input regarding the energy right now. So we are working um, in a much lighter energy right now. Uh, for some of us, um, or for some of you, the um, weeks from, from mid-April till the end, or even the beginning of April till the end of May, may have been like a warp, like a kind of black hole, like a kind of uh, really a, a, a difficult energy, but it would have brought you out of something, it would have brought with it a certain gift. It would have actually brought with you certain pearls of wisdom that you need to, to be able to go on a new um, sturdy um, determination that can take you further. And uh, so we're in a lighter energy now where things are easier to manifest. It's just much easier for things to take place. And if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, then we are you know, in warmer weather as well. And there's a lot of opportunity. Um, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, there's also a lot of opportunity, but it's, um, it's somehow, it'll impact you differently. It'll come to you from, um, for, in a way that uh, is not as apparent or as visible as um, those of you living in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is uh, like a very brief energy forecast and I'll try to get you out, uh, get out a few of them uh, for you in the next weeks. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start the reading. It's either one, two, or three. If you haven't made choices yet, please pause the video and um, you can go directly to the description box below where you will find the timestamp which will take you to your video. All right, so let's begin with the number one. Uh, for those of you who've chosen this quartz here, the question we're asking today is, what is it that you need to know with regard to your love life? What is it that you need to know with regard to love, uh, with, with regard to your love life, or it could be with regard to, to love with your family or with your friends, okay? So um, this is just about love in general. It could, it's most definitely going to apply to love relationship, that are uh, romantics, as well as other kind of love relationships. Okay, so it feels like, oops, that's two of them. Let's try again. I just want one card for today. If there are more that need to come in, then they may, but I'd like to have one clear card. All right, so we're gonna go with this. It's the number 23. It's the number 23 and it's the star mother Arrakis. Arrakis. Okay, the first thing I'm hearing here is that a lot's been going on that you don't know about. A lot's been going on around you that's been forming itself around you. And it's a direct consequence of your innermost consciousness. So your um, that of you which is unconscious. The other thing I'm hearing here is that the world is much greater. The universe is much greater. It's much, the this vision, it's the, the way in which it'll play out is much greater than the way in which you're thinking about it right now. So there are many um, unintended consequences to this. There are many things going on here that you don't know about with regard to this person, a person who is in your life, as well as uh, the family or the close friends of the person in your life, if there is someone in your life. Uh, but for those of you who have a particular person in their lives, um, that could apply to you. Uh, the main message here is that there you you're thinking right it's like you're thinking just here right you're thinking about you and yours your other your partner or the person that you love 
and or the person that you, you do you um thinking about as you do this reading and that is just this and then there's this all this other bit here which is also impacting you um which is also related to you which also has uh, a direct impact on what happens between you and in your person and so don't um just be open be open to different uh options and if your partner has come to you if you're the person that we ask we talk we're thinking about right now is coming to you and wondering about um and making a new proposition wondering whether you could do something different uh be open to it you know if they want to move to a different continent and you've just moved um to to a new continent with this person then even though it may seem absurd consider it um, even though it may seem um, exhausting or tiring or contrary to what you have been building towards, be open to the ideas that they bring to you. Um, the other thing that I'm hearing here is that the, this uh, relationship or this love is not actual, actually the most important thing in your life. So you might see it in that way, you might treat it that way, you might actually um, believe that to be the case, but it's actually fairly, um, I don't want to say insignificant, because it's certainly not insignificant, but or, there is a lot more that is as significant in your life as this love or as this person or as, as this relationship that you're thinking about right now. Um, there's much more in your life which has greater significance and is more pertinent to you than the situation, okay? So that's your message for those of you who've chosen the, the, the quartz here today. Um, and I hope that's resonated with you or that's helped you in some way. Um, that's basically what I'm getting for you. And um, the other thing I want to say quickly is that there's something outside of you which you haven't yet seen beyond this person, beyond this relationship, which is greater and it's going to offer you greater love and greater fulfillment and greater, uh, like a deeper feeling of love and connection with yourself as well as with the, this other thing and this other thing could be a person it could be somebody that you meet later on it could also be a particular thing that you do like a hobby or something that basically lights your fire but there is something greater that is not within your grasp right now it's not something that you're aware of and it's it's in your future and it's something that you still need to come to it's not meant to be right now. It's meant to be later. Uh, or it seems that it's later down on your path. So I'm not sure if it's meant to be later or not. Um, maybe that's not the correct choice of words. But um, it's because I don't want to imply that there's some kind of destiny here with regard to this. It's simply that there is uh, a sense that there's something greater that will bring you greater joy than you um, even can imagine, that you even believe to be possible, all right? So and that's um, not actually where you are right now. That's not, that's not really, so what, what you have right now is not, it will fade in uh, significance to what, what awaits you, okay? And that's really the message out there. There's also, um, if you want, to, I, I'm getting the sense that if you want to actually have more information and you want to know how this applies to you, light a white candle, okay, and call on the star mother Arrakis to actually give you the information that you need at this moment. And once again, the number here is 23, all right? And I hope that's been useful to you, okay? So sending you all much love and wishing you a fabulous week ahead. We're moving on to the... Uh, stone here, the um, this uh, ruby glass, and we're asking the question, what is it you need to know about love for this week? What is it that you need to know about love during this week? What is it that you need to know about love at the moment? Or what is your advice or your guidance for love at the moment? Okay, this feels right. We have the card Arise here. And, okay, this is a very particular message, okay? But um, it's a very, I'm getting like such a very specific message here. So for those of you that, that do not, um, uh, this doesn't apply to you, um, just bear with me for a moment. So you, you, there is this message here for somebody or more than one person. I'm feeling like th this is like a female, like a woman who's been waiting and, and expecting and just basically hoping that somebody is going to be the one, you know, hoping that they're going to leave their partner or hoping that they'll notice you or hoping that, um, you know, that you have destiny with them, believing that you do because of some 
indication that you might have past life, a relationship with them, or because you have something that made it feel like the soul bond that you have with that person is um, means or means or is, is um, the effect of it. The soul bond will be a relationship. So in a response to this, you've isolated yourself and you've actually um, uh, like maintained a monogamous spiritual bond with this person, meaning that you haven't allowed yourself to meet other people. You haven't allowed yourself to be in relationships with other people. You haven't actually allowed yourself to, even if you have dated or you've, you've been out there with different people, you haven't actually allowed your heart to open up to somebody else. In fact, what you've been doing is you've been protecting your heart, you've been holding it very close to you, and you haven't been letting yourself live, okay? And in the process, um, you've been, you. it's like you're not allowing yourself to breathe. And you've slowly been cowering in um, and hiding yourself in the world and not actually allowing yourself to come out and live and breathe and just simply feel the pulse of life. And in the process, there's a part of you that's been dying, okay? That's the best way to describe it. And and it's the only way I can really describe it. It's a part of you that stopped believing. It's a part of you that stopped hoping. It's a part of you that's actually just given up, actually. And and you just, you know, it's like you believe that this person is the only person for you. And um, and that's who it's got to be. And so no other relationship is worth investing in. No other friendship is worth investing in, in this to this extent. And you kind of made this the soul bond that you have with this person to be your center. You know, it's like your son and your life revolves around this. So the decisions you make in your life, where you live, how you work, what you do, where you go to, all of it hangs upon um, or is dependent upon the fact that you believe that this person is an integral part of your life. And what this card is saying is that Yes, this person, you have a soul bond with this person, but you have your own life. And it's time for you, uh, you've taken this break and you've needed to do this for yourself, all right? But it's time for you to rise up from that. So I'm getting this image like a phoenix rising or something, you know, rising from the ashes. Basically rebirthing, rebirthing yourself, renewing yourself, giving birth to yourself, bringing yourself back into the world. In the meantime, a lot has changed. You've developed a lot. You've been going through enormous change. You've metamorphosized. And now it's time for you to step out into the world and experience the world anew. Because the world that you experienced before you met this person and before you've changed has actually, it was a different world. And when you get out into the world now and you start seeing new people, you start doing more things, you need to like step out and be more social. When you do this now, you will find that a very different world of way waits you. And it's going to be quite, um, I'm hearing the words like, uh, like tremendous or splendor, uh, or just it's going to be uh, not splendid, but it's going to be it's going to be actually really wonderful and really amazing. It's going to be like you just stepped onto this planet for the first time, and everything's going to be new and feel wonderful to you. And what I'm hearing is, don't be afraid to do that right now, and call upon angelic help or um, divine helpers to help you with this because. What's happened is that you've been in the state for so long. You've been in a habit of being perhaps antisocial or uh, not as social as you used to be, or um, not as open as you used to be. And you've been, you've been, you know, it's a habit that you need to break. It's not just about a decision that you made or something that your 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 heart yearns for. It's not just that. You know, it's also a habit that you've made that you've created in your life, and you need to break that habit. And you know, like uh, get your feet wet, get your toes wet, get out a little bit. Do whatever it need, you need to do to slowly edge yourself back into the world. And when you do so, the world is new you and it's like you have been given a second chance and something, something awaits you which is of your own doing. It's of your own manifestation. It's all to do with you and what you can give to this experience. And um, the more you give, the more you'll be able to appreciate from it, okay? So for those of you who don't have that particular... Uh, um, kind of scenario that I painted out. Um, for you, the same, it's the same thing, right? It's about actually um, coming, stepping out of the shadow, allowing yourself to take up that space on this earth. You know, this earth belongs to you as well as every other person there. And you have a voice and you have the space to be able to express yourself in any which way you uh, desire or you try to. Uh, 
And you need to give yourself that opportunity to do so. And you need to not miss out on another second of that. You need to actually get out there and put yourself out there. And even if, if it doesn't mean being sociable in your instance, maybe it means writing something. Maybe it means blogging. Maybe it means doing YouTube videos. Maybe it means, um, you know, just doing an audio, uh, like a podcast or something like this. Um, do something to put yourself, not to put yourself out there necessarily, but to put your, your ideas out there, to express yourself, to take up, um, you know, real estate in this world. Because you your voice and what you have to say is as potent and as relevant and as, um, uh, what is the word? It's like as sacred, thank you, Spirit, as sacred as everything and everyone else on this planet, okay? So you have the opportunity to do that and you simply need to, allow yourself to have that okay so i hope that uh this these messages have resonated with you and i hope that um that has been of some use to you i'm moving on now to the last one here and the question we're asking is what is it that you need to know for this week what is it uh what is it in terms of your love life that you need to hear what is your guidance in terms of your love life or in terms of love this at this time Okay, this feels right. And we have um, Merciful, Merciful Mother Jamal. So, it is the number 44. Okay, so for those of you, and I feel there definitely are a couple of you, who've been... Um, seeing the number 44 or seeing 444 or just you know um needing to dial something with two fours in it or or just having a bill you know which is like 44 cents uh something like you know 38 and 44 cents or something like this i just want to say that yes you <laughs> you have been seeing that for a reason okay so sometimes you know people say that they sing these numbers and what does it mean and um i want to say that firstly if you're seeing these numbers and you attach a significance to it you'll see a lot more of them if you see the numbers and you don't attach a significance to it and you're not awaiting anything you're not expecting anything you won't see these numbers okay so even if you're looking out for them you won't see them because you're not attaching any significance to them so um but but it doesn't always mean that that is something you know that's outside of you that's trying to communicate with you or give you a message or something like that what it actually is is your own subconscious or your own spirit just drawing you um to those things okay so don't always place too much of significance on that i know that some people actually you know do that and uh uh, they think it's very meaningful they need they think it's actually very powerful it it's actually not, uh, all right, um, as far as my, my, the information that I receive, it's not actually as, um, as relevant as people think it is. And it feels more like a fallacy, all right? So there, is, there are times when the, the numerological value of these numbers are important and the, and the, you know, the vibration of it is something else. That is that is all very relevant and that's all part of our lives. But actually, you know, the fact that you see them all the time, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that you are about to um, be with your twin flame or something like that. All right. So um, don't don't uh, don't allow these um, your mind to trick you into believing in something that is not. OK, um, you know, when you read cards and when you when you work in this uh, medium of actually uh, giving people messages, it's very easy for people to misinterpret that and to actually uh, create a lot of hope and to create illusion for themselves. And this can be actually quite detrimental to, to you. So I know that you haven't come yet to hear all of that, but I just wanted to mention it. I felt it was important for at least one or two of you out there. So we have the merciful mother, Jamal. And okay, so this message is actually about grace. It's talking about 
being graceful within your relationships. It's talking about forgiveness. It's talking about the ability to forgive and not to protect yourself with armor that actually uh, it comes uh, stems out of insecurity and hurt that you've had uh, previously. Uh, not to, to stop protecting yourself, but to actually embody that part of you, which is your grace. And you don't need to have an exoskeleton. You don't need to have a hard um, you know, some armor around you to protect you. What you need to, the way in which you need to protect yourself is actually to understand your true essence and your grace, okay? And to respond to situations in a graceful manner and not to be nitpicky, I'm hearing, and also not to be too um, harsh and, and or not to be um, too pokey. I'm sorry, I'm getting all these words. Um, so they obviously, you know, relate to some of you and maybe not all of you. Um, but not to be like if somebody comes home, like let's I'm just going to give you an example, right? So your partner's gone away and uh, he has come back home, but then he has to leave already again. And your response would be to actually be upset because you're not getting to spend enough time with each other because maybe they're, they're not taking they you need to take more responsibility as a result of them being away. OK, well, the, the message here for, for those of you who are in similar situations when that situation is actually to come from a place of grace. And to come from a place where you're poised with love and with kind of unconditional compassion, like a compassion and love, like just actual full of warmth and, and flowing around the situation like water and not being like earth or mountain where you or stone where you actually need to just be rigid in order to get your way or to prove a point or to be able to see to let the other person see that you're having that you're experiencing hurt so what they're saying to you here what this message is here is that you need to suspend that you need to suspend whatever armor you've been uh using to protect yourself whether it's you know you are being critical of the person because of what they're doing because it's hurting you of course it's hurting you very deeply if you are being critical at all so you know, so just be able to suspend that and just come from a place of love and come from a place like compassion is really important. Like the two, the key words for this here is compassion and it's grace. Okay, so if you can come from a place of compassion and you, if you can poise yourself gracefully and come from a place of grace, then you will be able to, uh, you'll be able to actually conquer the situation you will have more power in this way to be able to wield your will in this in the situation and you will actually have what you want and it wouldn't be because you are being manipulative or because you need to find a way to get them to give you the attention that you desire or do what they promised that they would do it will simply be because you believe that you're worthy of it and you believe that you actually you deserve it and that it's actually something that um that is due to you and you don't need to ask and you don't need to beg. Uh, you don't need to uh, be upset. You know, you simply need to be. OK, so for those of you who don't have any such hassles in your life and uh, you're actually just going along and things are all merry and you're wondering, what am I going on about? Well, I think the message here for you is simply this. it's the same. It's continue with grace, continue with compassion, infuse every situation that you deal with, with compassion and grace. And with that, you are healing the world. And with that, you're healing given situations and you're spreading healing um, from you and from in, into the world, like into the people around you. And that goes on and it's spread to other people, to the family, to friends, to co-workers, to the public in general. And in doing so, you are actually, you're actually just bringing more light into this world and you're bringing more beauty into this world. And it's a very soft beauty. It's very delicate. It's very subtle. You know, it's, it's something that's just... Um, like the first rays of the morning sun and it's you know when it gently you know that gentle light that you feel it's not like the harsh rays of the sun at midday it's something quite gentle and subtle and beautiful and this is how you need to be flowing through your life so I'm getting this flowing this water energy like being zen flowing through your life in a zen way and um and yes, being merciful and being and being um, a calling upon a higher strength in yourself to be merciful when the situation requires it, but but in, encompassing passion, um, sorry, compassion, <laughs> along the way. Um, this is the key for this situation at this moment. All right. So I don't know how much of that has been resonating with you. How much of that 
um, you needed to hear, whether that applies to you at all, but I hope it has. And I hope that, um, that uh, yeah, I hope that's been beneficial to you. I just want to say there's something else I'm seeing in this card. Um, okay, so this is another very specific message here uh, for some of you. So for those of you who have a baby in spirit, uh, this might have been a miscarriage or uh, a child that was stillborn or... Um, but it's a young person. It could. It doesn't necessarily have to be your child. It could be. It could be some child. There's some kind of very young child here, almost in the fetus, those stages. Um, there's a spirit, okay, of that child. So it's very vague and it's very. Uh, yeah, it it doesn't. There's not uh, too many things to describe it by. But there's this energy that's with you, all right. And I just wanted to mention that. So I wish all of you very well, and um, I hope that's been beneficial to you, and um, blessings abound from Kismet Rising.